My son wouldn't bully anybody. My son's not like that. Well, and anyway, I just very you rude have no me. proof that my son wrote any of well, that. Well, maybe so I'm sorry. Maybe I don't want to hear it. Sorry, well, maybe don't they were sort of right. No, sorry. Okay, stop. She's too much for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's drama. Ooh. At Queensbridge School in Birmingham, drama teacher Kate Fanshaw is encouraging staff in all departments to utilise drama techniques across the curriculum. The whole idea of using drama as a, as a vehicle for teaching is, is one that's at the heart of the school because we're a specialist college in the performing arts. So Kate's involvement working with other drama teachers and with other artists was one starting point for this work but the other starting point was the fact that that we have a commitment to using the arts across the curriculum to make teaching and learning more exciting. Drama education expert Jonathan Neelands has been integral in helping Kate to introduce her ideas to the staff. I've been involved with Queensbridge School for about six or seven years now, originally through Helen Reeves, the vice principal who was head of drama, looking at assessment frameworks. More recently, last year, as part of a creative partnerships project involving a number of schools, of which Queensbridge was one, and Queensbridge's particular interest was in looking at the uses of drama across the curriculum. We came in and did some workshops. And now, of course, next year they plan to develop and extend that work, and I'm very excited about being involved with that as well. I think that drama is a very balanced way of teaching and learning. You know, if you think about it, students are using language, they're using their bodies, they're using space, they're responding visually as well as cognitively. It's very comprehensive in terms of the different intelligences, different approaches to teaching and learning that are included within any single drama session. If you take multiple intelligence theory, uh, you've got seven or possibly eight different modes of learning. In a good drama classroom, Five of those are being used, the kinesthetic learning clearly, but the, there's interpersonal and intrapersonal. Uh, there's certainly an awful lot that uses language, um, but, but drama is visual as well. Using drama in the classroom came about quite organically. Staff came on board very quickly and they were keen to try out drama strategies in their classroom, active learning techniques. Kate holds regular seminars open to any interested staff to demonstrate a variety of active learning techniques. I've been encouraging staff to come along to the seminars every half term um, where we explore a range of active techniques and then they're free to go away and try some out, put some into their planning or I might support them with some planning. Teachers in different subjects are made to think of ways in which Kate's techniques might be useful in supplementing their own teaching. Someone was like an eco-warrior, someone was for intensive agriculture and they had to argue their point and ask each other questions. Probably getting into roles in terms of maybe a kid from a, a developing country. Put the students in the role of a teacher and me being the naughty boy and see how they try and cope with it and just see how frustrated they get. And I could mm. be in role and I could sort of say things and then they could come along and, and ask me questions. They could be particular characters mm. from the book because they know a lot yeah, of the characters, characters so from far. The books are really good, aren't they? Some teachers are very nervous about trying out role play or teacher in role because they don't want to go into role themselves. But that's just one strategy that they could choose to <laughs> avoid. There's, what we're aiming to do is build up a bank of strategies that people can then select from. I think what makes people more nervous is the behaviour management side of things and we need to prove that an active classroom isn't a disruptive one. It's about how you plan to put that strategy into your lesson plan and it's about structure and pace and it doesn't mean that your lesson has to become loud and disorganised. I've just got a feeling that once you sort of pick a particular child out and you send them to the back and say, right, now you come down as this, mm -hmm. the rest will be jeering and doing silly things and I'm thinking, how do you control that? You can always choose the ringleader to be the first character or even pick somebody to be the mother while you coordinate the rest of the class. But it's drama yeah. and it's in role. I think it's great. Um, I'm feeling really excited about it and the possibilities. I've been sitting thinking about my own schemes of work and how I could actually apply some of the techniques we've seen today to my own schemes of work. Because I feel it's actually going to great, bring a great deal of excitement and life to some of those. There are some techniques that I really want to try, but with some classes I'm thinking, I don't know whether or not this is a good idea, but I want to go ahead and try it anyway. I thought it was very useful. Um, I'm always open to new ideas. so. 
um, coming to this active learning session really helped me bring out some new ideas, maybe use in the classroom. There are two different jobs to do in terms of convincing or moving teachers towards a willingness to use drama as a, as a tool for teaching in the classroom. Um, one is that of, of reassuring them that they're not going to be asked to work in, in role or in a way that's, that's suddenly going to expose them outside of their, their comfort zone. The second barrier is the one of slowing people down. And I think that the issue there is that staff need to focus on how well a pupil is learning, not how much they're delivering and teaching. People get, sometimes get put off by it being drama because the idea about drama is that it happens in a, in a drama studio and it's very on your feet and people shy away from that sometimes. Um, if they're not drama specialists. It is more about active strategies that you can use in your classroom. You don't have to move the desks, you don't have to move the chairs. It's about engaging students in a more active way. We talked about her having bits on her that they would actually take off as well. Yeah. Um, like a little badge that said protein. Yeah, carbohydrates. A little badge that says carbohydrate, fats, fats and that. So you could stop her as she comes down, when, maybe when she's in the stomach, right stomach, what bits do you need to take off she right now? Students don't have to be good at drama um, to take part in active learning because it's not necessarily about getting up and acting, which is what people think drama might be. Students, I think, need a certain degree of confidence and we're lucky here and students do dance, they do drama, they do music, so their confidence might be a little higher than a non-specialist arts college, but that's no reason that it can't work because I think a good teacher is a teacher that uses a range of strategies anyway in order to cater for all the learning styles and you're always going to find students who learn better through active strategies. Anthony, can you tell me what part of the chicken sandwich contains protein? Chicken. Excellent. Okay, sit yourself down. The question as to whether or not drama is going to work more for some pupils than for others is that all the aspects of learning that are relational, that are language-based, that are about being creative or solving problems in, in a lateral way, that those are relevant to every child. And yes, some children will, will be a little more anxious or will take more readily to a particular approach, but we have a responsibility to encourage all children to work collaboratively using language, being creative, problem-solving in groups. And I think that a lot of that is what goes on in a drama approach. I think one of the reasons active learning strategies have been so popular um, from when we started in Queensbridge is because we did a big survey of the, the styles in which students learn and we categorised them into visual, auditory or kinesthetic learners and a lot of our students came out as kinesthetic learners, ones who learn by doing or with active strategies. When you see that data it's obvious that you, you need to cater for some of those needs and the active strategies that we've started putting into place do that. It's not important to me that there's drama going on in every classroom. What is important to me is that there's high quality teaching and learning going on in every classroom. And what I'm convinced about is that drama has a major contribution to make to that. But drama enhances learning. You know, it's not a substitute. Teachers still need to have a broad palette of teaching styles and learning methods that they, that they use in their classroom, including drama. Although most of the active learning techniques can be implemented in the classroom, it does sometimes help to move the class to the drama. Studio. The protein gets broken down by the protease enzyme into amino acids. Amino acids. Amino acids. Amino acids. Amino acids. Okay, make sure you pronounce that right. No, 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 no. Each group's going through their presentation um, just to check that they're ready to do it and ready to make sure they've got all the information that they need in their piece of narration. The water goes through the wall of the small intestine and you're left with the roughage. Yeah, it's interesting. It's nice because it's. um more hands-on, more walking around. It's very different to um, in a science lesson. Of course, we can get up, but we're restricted by the benches that don't move, so. It's going well so far. They're impressing me, because I'm seeing them with new skills that I don't normally see in science, so. Yeah, they are impressing me. I'll get you in a Three, two, one. And stop, please. The interest that there is in drama is, is about looking at specific techniques within drama that might be useful across the curriculum. But I think what you also observe in a drama lesson, even if the content is deadly serious, is a lot of fun and enjoyment. And I think that 
one thing that we have to get over is the idea that there is some sort of uh, opposition between pleasure and seriousness when it comes to schoolwork. You know, students, I think, are more likely to take their learning seriously if it is also pleasurable. Pick up on the facts that they're putting in. Pick up on the things they say in the narration. Pick up on the actions that they do to show you. Because if you watch their actions and movements, it might help you to remember it better. Digestion starts with mechanical digestion, which is chewing. After the food is broken into smaller pieces, it passes down the gullet. It's a great idea, instead of just writing down in your book what you would do, it's a great idea to act it, because you know what you're doing, and like how, and like how the system works. There are three types of enzymes in the small intestines. I break down protein. I break down carbohydrates. In a couple of years' time, you could think back and say if you weren't acting out, you were just writing it down. You could think back and you could forget all about your science. But if you act it out, and then you got, you can like you can you can give you can feed it back to yourself. Hydrochloric acid can be found in the stomach. He, this kills the germs and makes ideal condition for the protease enzymes. I think it's fun. Like sometimes science lessons are a bit boring, but like it's just mixed it about together and made it really fun. So I've really enjoyed it. The large intestinal material is passed to the rectum where it is stored. It is passed out through the body and through the anus. It then turns to poo. I think I've seen a lot of the kids in the different lights today, especially some ones that can be quite challenging within the classroom, have really shown me how hard they can work in other subjects where they're more actively involved or maybe more kinesthetic learners and they don't get the opportunity in class to do such activities such as this. I think that they've achieved a great deal. They've got all the science in there I wanted them to have in there. In fact, even more, some of the stuff we wouldn't even generally with an 8 set 4 group such as this go into, it's more a GCSE level, but in fact I think they've actually learnt more than they might, might have learnt in the actual classroom. Well I hope they think they would like to do this again in other topics that are relevant and I do hope to try it with some other topics such as electricity, so we'll see. The objective for today was to perform your presentation, demonstrate that you understand what happens in your part of the digestive system. How did they show what happens in the large intestine? Describe what they did to me, Shanoi. They was using that bucket, like the paper in it, I mean the tissue paper. They were. What was the tissue paper representing when they squeezed it out? Uh, food. Food, yeah, the roughage that's left over. So when you're trying to remember food getting passed out of the body, I want you to remember Shirelle's roly-poly. This is part of a four-year development plan. Um, this is not something that we're expecting to happen over a term or three terms. It's happening slowly over four years. And our vision is that at the end of four years, everybody in Queensbridge has the um, bank of strategies that they can select from to choose the best strategy that fits their learning objective, which helps them to reach that objective. Um, and to reach the different learning styles of the children in the classroom. I, I think that there's a, there's a snowball effect going on. I mean, as I speak to you, a primary school in Leicester that I'm very involved with, the Times, Times Educational Supplement are in today taking pictures of drama across the curriculum in the primary school in a, in a very troubled school. Um, so I, I think that there is a, that there is a, a gathering of interest. Uh, you know, as we focus on pedagogy, understanding that we have to improve the quality of teaching in our schools, Drama has always been very concerned with pedagogy, very concerned with what high quality teaching looks like and is. So, you know, I don't think it's any mistake, any accident that it's, it's, it's coming to the fore at the moment.